don't tell me this is a long-term strategy because it's not. It is not. You can't. Watford fans, I dare you. I dare any Watford fan to go in the comments and go, this is smart. <laughs> he loves it, doesn't he? He just, he just no, guys, I, uh, I just want to, you know. That sounds like Boris, doesn't it? I was trying to do Roy Hodgson. Welcome back to the James Lawrence Allcott channel, and welcome back to another video talking about Watford and their continual sacking of managers. But, breaking news, Roy Hodgson, they just keep pulling him back in. They just, they, he can't keep away. No, 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 no. Now, I've done my bit now. I've done my 90 years as a manager. It's time for me to move on. No! Go on then, one last job. All right, I'll come save you then. I'll come save you for six months and then get, you know, sacked after that. Let's go back, shall we? Before we get into the video, and <laughs> I nearly called this my problem with Watford again, but fortunately, the breaking news has sorted me out. If you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. If you're a Watford fan, get the hell into the comments and tell me how you're feeling about your football club. Because we need to talk about Ranieri being sacked, and there is an element of hypocrisy in the stuff that I'm going to say here. Because, first of all, Here's a tweet that I put out on Friday night. Yeah. I mean, look, it's not the most audacious of predictions, but the fact that it came to be is really sad. Now, again, there's going to be hypocrisy in this because should he have been sacked? Probably. You know, seven points from 13 games, I think it is, isn't great. Did he have the energy for it? Who knows? It didn't feel like it. They didn't seem organised. They couldn't stop the ball from going into their own net. Yes, they were scoring goals at times. There were a couple of juicy victories. 5-2, 4-1 against Man United. But overall, I mean, the performance against Norwich was truly woeful. But the problem is, is that it's the culture of the team that I can tweet this out with such confidence on a Friday for a manager who's been a manager of a team for three months and be correct. So first of all, Ranieri getting sacked, should he have got sacked? Me like maybe, right? And th it happens sometimes that go, right, this really isn't working. We're going to need to change this. The broader problem and the the shock or the sort of outrage that comes from football fans is this culture of sacking. And what's happening now is that it's just so obvious. And when it's so obvious, it becomes inevitable. And the inevitability of it at the end of the road, the thing that's inevitable is failure. Is you're not up to it, out you go. And so once you're not up to it, out you go is the understanding as you make your way into a job, you have no authority. And there are other things that I've read recently that suggest that there truly is no authority. The, and it's just, it's counterintuitive. It's like counterproductive. It's not going to work. And that's what I've said. Like I've done this video. I did this video earlier in the year. The culture of sacking. Now, and a lot of people going, well, no, this has worked for us. This has worked for us. Fine. This is the exception that proves the rule. And sooner or later, you're going to trip up with it. Like, it's rubbish. It's honestly... And it's something that Watford fans have got to be in a position now where they feel like, this isn't, this isn't right, is it? It's not right, yeah. Because you could go, well, it works for Chelsea. Sort of. They have, like, outrageous amounts of money that allow you to bypass this ruthlessness. That, like, to a point, with a club that's very well run otherwise with the amount of Academy products that they create as well, you can put any somewhat competent manager as manager of Chelsea and they'll probably be okay. To a point, right? But for Watford, so this is an amazing stat. It's from Oliver Kay on The Athletic. It's absolutely brilliant. So since starting the 2019-20 season, amid claims of newfound stability, this was, of course, Gracia. You remember Gracia? Watford have played 104 league games under seven different managers. To frame it slightly differently, their past 58 matches in the Premier League have overseen by six different coaches. 
And the record over that period, 12 wins, 12 draws, 34 defeats. And importantly, seven of those came when Pearson was in charge. And the amount of... <laughs> four, the four games for Gracia, 10 for Kike Sancho Flores. Hayden Mullins, like, fair enough. When you chuck in the caretaker, it, always, it makes it a bit cheeky. Hang on, let me just roll it up. Nigel Pearson, 20 of those games. Ivic, 20. Munoz, 33. And Ranieri, 13. It's a, it's a culture that is... It means that, of course, like, if you know going in that it's... A, it's like the substitute teacher. That's what it's like. You know when you've got a substitute teacher and you go, well, what are you going to do, really? You're not going to be here for long. That's it. There's no accountability for the players. And I'm not doubting that the players are professional and are trying their best. But to sort of re-energise yourself every single time when you know... And also that feeling and that tension of when it starts to go wrong. But also that it's not really going to be your problem. And also you've probably not got that much of an emotional tie to these managers either. Because going in, it's like, well... This is a holiday romance. Like, I've, well, I'm, my flight's on, you know, in two weeks' time. So, you know, this is great, um, but it's it will end. It's It just doesn't work. It really, really doesn't work. And you can pretend that it does, and maybe it has because you've been able to get these little, like, turbo boost bounce back ability moments with a new manager. But the more you're pressing the button again and again and again and again, the more, the less power there is. And it's now, it's lost its impact massively. And what's ridiculous is that to suggest that this is like thought through doesn't make any sense because the philosophy on the pitch, it's not like your Swansea, for example, where you go, this is the way that we play and we have coaches that we bring in that play this style of football. And okay, yes, that manager's gone because he's gone to a bigger club, or that manager's gone because he's got a, a bad uh, run because he's not—it's not working. But to, every new manager plays different football. Every new manager that they get plays different football. It's not great football either, which is not important. But what is important is that you build a squad that suits a, a, a style of play. For a long time, I thought the opposite. For a long time, it's like okay, let's find out who the best eleven players are, and then figure it out. No, it doesn't work. You have to figure out your system and then there are enough quality professional players out there for you to make the right acquisitions within that. Because when it comes to stability, the changes in managers would be fine, but the style of play changes. So it's so confusing. Uh, and they might stay up again. And second, this is what I mean, there is hypocrisy here. Second Ranieri... I get it, but it's when you zoom out and you look at the whole strategy of Watford, it's not something that can continue. And even like previously, Watford have suggested that, look, we only make our decisions at the end of each season. Yes, we bring in a new manager each time, but it's because we, we get to the end of the year and our recruitment's right. That's nonsense as well. You're hiring from a position of weakness. There's no run up to it now, certainly with this last six or seven in the last two years. I saw a stat that <laughs> I think it's like 15 managers in the last 10 years or something like that. Probably less, I think. Less the years. It's only three less managers than West Ham have had in their entire history. Anyone who's defending this have got their head in the sand. Definitely. <laughs> it doesn't make sense these aren't smart decisions you don't want Ranieri no, it, no one wants Ranieri as their manager anymore like, he's a nice guy I get it but it, like, football's moving on you're hiring from a position of weakness and you're doing it again and in terms of that philosophy of like mm, no, no we know what we're doing we're two steps ahead of you name a good football club that's, that's aside from Chelsea that does this and it works without any like clear philosophy on how you play. It's just so rubbish. <laughs> and so then you bring in Roy Hodgson, who again, the hypocrisy is amazing. Really good shout. I think it's a really good shout. Six months, he's a manager you're not going to want long term. I love that he knows how to keep teams in the Premier League, which is the remit, right? 
I think it's a really smart, you know, you've got ties to the club with Ray Lewington coming back as well. It's a smart decision. But the guy's 74. And again, that that's not his fault. And I'm sure he is incredibly intelligent, totally switched on and has, I really, really hope, as many years in the tank as possible. And look, he's he's got incredible spirit. And he was only managing a couple of weeks ago. So the last thing I want to do is patronise Roy Hodgson. But this is like, this is firefighting again. So don't, don't pretend that it's this thought out strategy because it's utter nonsense. And Hodgson could keep them up. You know, I'm, I'm so pleased Lampard's not taking this job because uh, if he'd have taken this job, I would have gone mad. <laughs> I would have gone, hang on a minute. So you, you've had all these probably opportunities that you could have taken, but you want to wait for the right one. And then you've gone for Watford. Are you mad? <laughs> but they haven't. Hodgson is a it's there's an element of genius in it just because I think he's he what he is about is defensive defensive structure right and with the Watford squad the likes of Saar likes of Dennis Joshua King there's players there that I think could suit that system quite well and then you know diligent midfielders like likes of say cleverly let's say so if you can get that defensive structure right and win games on the counter-attack I think the goals will dry up but there are a lot of similarities between the Crystal Palace side that he kept up and this Watford side where, look, yeah, instead of a Zaha, you've got uh, Ishmael Asar. So it's good, like, this is it. This is what this channel's about. And this is what my brain's about, sadly, is that I get it. Like, I get different sides of it. I get why you've sacked him. I get why you've swapped a 70-year-old for a 74-year-old. But don't tell me this is a strategy. Don't tell me this is a long-term strategy. Because it's not. It is not. You can't. Watford fans, I dare you. I dare any Watford fan to go in the comments and go, this is smart. Explain to me that. You'll go, oh, look, we're, we're moving forward, like the, the, the position of the team. Fine. But it, that's about the players, really. You've had better players. So the recruitment on that side, fine. But this, this, it, this doesn't work. Thomas Frank, Graham Potter, you know... All the, all the teams that go on great runs, the teams that go up, have a manager that stays there and has wobbles and they have a team that goes, oh, okay, I better raise my level here because he's not really going anywhere. I know he's not going to go anywhere. <sighs> I dare you. Come on. <laughs> There's got to be someone. There's got to be someone. And I will go, I'll be in the comments and I'll go, fair point. No, fair enough. All right. If you can convince me, I'll be blown away. I just don't think this works. So there you have it. Good luck, Roy. I think it's a good shout, <laughs> bizarrely. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this one. Hit the subscribe button as well. And I'll see you very soon.